up beautiful friends in our today's video we are going to be having a story time of a Tanzanian lady by the name of Rhoda 37 years old a single mother of one who thought had fallen in love on online dating apps with a Spanish guy his name is Carlos they planned to meet for the first time in Dubai and what happened guys on their first meeting it's gonna shock you it's gonna make you so angry <laughs> but at the same time guys you will laugh a lot a lot a lot and something else guys about today's video it's a bit sensitive we're gonna have a little bit of girls talk so guys just sit down with a glass of water a glass of wine a glass of juice some popcorns and enjoy today's story and guys if you are someone who is on online dating apps searching for that right man in your life especially you ladies that are interested in interracial dating you are searching for a white man for marriage this video will help you a lot you will learn lots lots of new things that will shine your eyes so without wasting much of your time let us jump into this video by starting with Rhoda's past love relationship experience how was it like was Rhoda in a love relationship with a Tanzanian guy if yes how did it go why did Rhoda join online dating apps to search for a white man? So friends, Rhoda gives us a bit of her life background. Tells us was born in Mwanza, Tanzania, in Yamwezi by tribe. And when it comes to studies, she studied till primary seven, never went to secondary school. So when Rhoda was 19 years old, started hustling for life, and she was lucky, found a job in this luxurious hotel in Mwanza City, Tanzania. So the kind of job that Rhoda got in that luxury hotel in Mwanza was a cleaning job. So she used to clean the rooms and also lay the beds. But tells us they were professionals, people who had studied housekeeping so she could follow whatever they could tell her to do, as in cleaning and laying the beds. Cause those people had studied, you know, they knew what they were doing. So Rhoda was just assisting them. That was her job in that luxurious hotel in Mwanza city. So everything was going well and Rhoda mastered, you know, <laughs> cleaning and laying the beds like someone who went to school to study for housekeeping. But she just learned, you know, <laughs> they say experience is the best teacher. So I think with this, yes, experience was the best teacher. So after Rhoda mastering everything in her housekeeping she was taken to the service department in that hotel stayed in the service department and also did so well her manager was very very happy then she was moved to the kitchen to assist the chefs so in the kitchen she also did so well could follow everything that the chefs could tell her learned how to cook literally everything tells us sometimes orders could come in english and she doesn't understand english language <laughs> so the chef could teach her and because she was so bright very very intelligent learned so fast everything was super good even her salary increased so as Rhoda was there at the hotel working came across this tanzanian guy he was a client of that hotel talked to Rhoda and was like Rhoda i like you so much i would like to see you more and more so that i get to know you better <laughs> <laughs> so Rhoda was so happy and tells us this guy was 15 years older than her so the guy told her yes i'd like to see you more and more but the problem i don't live in Mwanza i live in Dar es Salaam but because i like you so much when i go back to Dar es Salaam i'm going to plan everything so that you can come to Dar es Salaam 
to visit me and we get to know each other better and you also get to visit Dar es Salaam because Dar es Salaam is a very big city so when Rhoda heard of Dar es Salaam she was really excited you know yes Mwanza is a very big city a very beautiful city but not compared to Dar es Salaam Dar es Salaam is a very big city well developed it has got lots of sand beaches compared to Mwanza so for Rhoda because she had never been to Dar es Salaam thought like Dar es Salaam is you know kind compared to New York <laughs> the New York that she could see in the TV okay <laughs> so that is what she thought couldn't wait for that guy to invite her to Dar es Salaam and yes this guy went to Dar es Salaam after two weeks Rhoda tells us this guy told Rhoda can you please come to visit me I'm going to send you a bus ticket Rhoda was like no just send me money so that I can believe you <laughs> so this guy sent her money and yes got her bus ticket left her room because she was living with another girl whom they were working together at the hotel left everything there with that lady because knew that was going to go back to Mwanza after visiting this guy in Dar es Salaam so yes started her trip went to Dar es Salaam and when she arrived at the bus stop the guy was there waiting for her they were so happy to meet each other they hugged and then this guy took Rhoda to the hotel so friends after arriving at the hotel and guys I want you to keep this in your mind as we listen to story remember coming from Mwanza it's not all that big city if you compare it to Dar es Salaam like I said so we can call her a village girl <laughs> so she's a village girl in Dar es Salaam and another thing is that that guy was the first guy she didn't have any experience of how is it like to be in a relationship with a guy she didn't have any experience of how is it like to date a city boy <laughs> so that is why she didn't ask herself lots of questions why did this guy bring me here at the hotel and not at his house not at all because she was very young and naive so after arriving at the hotel tells us it was late in the evening this guy took her around Dar es Salaam city and then later on took her to eat some fast food if you have ever been to Dar es Salaam, you will know that Dar es Salaam people, especially the young generation, <laughs> likes to eat fast food. So took Rhoda to this famous fast food called African Chips. Tells us it is in Manyanya, Kinondoni. So they ordered for half chicken sekela. <laughs> if you are Tanzanian, or if you have ever been in Tanzania, then you will know what is chicken sekela. Oh my God, chicken sekela is so, so good. I'll show you the photo here <laughs> so that you can see it and maybe go and Google about it. I'm not going to explain on how to prepare chicken sekela. Yeah, so she took chicken sekela and some chips and then returned to the hotel with this guy. But another thing is that the guy never slept at the hotel, never took the good. <laughs> left Rhoda at the hotel and was like I'm going to come tomorrow so the next day the guy did not come and even the following day did not come this guy came after three days of Rhoda being alone in that hotel he paid for everything at that hotel told them that you should give her breakfast lunch and dinner so Rhoda was just okay apart from not having anyone else that she knew in Dar es Salaam so after three days this guy came and told Rhoda don't worry I'm still organizing to take you to your own place so just be patient with me Rhoda was like it's okay I'm gonna wait so for that day the guy took Rhoda around Dar es Salaam and took her to this famous beach <laughs> 
cold cocoa beach guys this cocoa beach is just a public beach <laughs> nothing special about it but i don't know why is it so so famous you can't talk of beaches in dar es Salaam without mentioning cocoa beach even people who come from other cities or even the tourists when they go to dar es Salaam, the first beach they are taken to is the cocoa beach so rhoda was so happy to be at coco beach you know the feeling good <laughs> you are in that famous place that everyone talks about you know in tanzania yeah so she was over the moon happy oh my god they fry very yummy cassava with kachumbari <laughs> If you're from Kenya or Tanzania, you are going to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Kachumbari and Mihogo. Yeah, that's the only good thing about Coco Beach. Yeah, so their day at Coco Beach ended and returned again to the hotel. So after taking Rhoda back to the hotel, the guy did what? Did not sleep. Left Rhoda again alone. And that time... He left Rhoda for one week alone, but left her with money if she wants to go, you know, do some shopping. She had food, everything, drinks, if she wanted beer, wine, <laughs> whatever. So Rhoda stayed there and started making friends, the clients <laughs> who used to come there, but you know, female friends, not male friends. <laughs> so she made some female friends and yeah, her life continued at the hotel after a week this guy returned it's like i was so busy with work but don't worry i'm still organizing for your own place rhoda still believed in the guy and was like okay i am going to wait so when he returned for that one week he stayed there with her for some days and yes he took the goodies <laughs> Yeah, she shared her goodies and all was fine. And after another one week, the guy disappeared. So he could disappear for a week, return for a week, disappear again for two weeks, then return, but had paid for everything. So Rhoda stayed at that hotel for two good months. And the situation was like that. The guy could come, then disappear come then disappear even the hotel people were aware about that so Rhoda tells us her third month at the hotel the guy paid for only one week and when one week was over the guy was nowhere to be seen <laughs> she tried to call the guy the guy wasn't available even the hotel people came to ask Rhoda what's happening where is your boyfriend Rhoda was like I've been trying to call him but he is not available Available. Then the hotel people tried to call him, but still the guy wasn't available. Rhoda started getting so frustrated and very scared of how is she going to survive in Dar es Salaam. Doesn't know anyone under that hotel had accumulated some bills, didn't have money to pay those people. So as she was there, didn't know what to do, then came this friend that I told you she met before, was a client, talked to this friend and was like, you know what, my boyfriend has not been coming here. We have been trying to call him, we can't reach him. So this friend, this lady, told Rhoda, girl, this guy has run away from you. You don't know Dar es Salaam city boys. <laughs> The guy has dumped you already and left you with a bill. You have to look for a way to escape from this hotel. Otherwise, they're going to call a police on you. So Rhoda got even more scared. And the friend told her on how to escape and go start living with her. So after three weeks, Rhoda had started planning on how to escape. She could take her things little by little to her friend's place and eventually was able to escape, even changed her phone number, never wanted to be reached out due to the bill at the hotel. So she started staying with that friend and then sent a friend to go at the hotel and start, you know, <laughs> 
<laughs> asking questions to know if the guy came or not so after a friend going to that hotel then those people at the hotel were like yeah the guy came and paid for everything has been looking for Rhoda but Rhoda is nowhere to be seen because the hotel people didn't know that Rhoda was staying with a friend so the friend asked for his phone number and they gave it to her then when she returned home gave the phone number to Rhoda Rhoda called the guy so after calling the guy the guy was like Rhoda I was traveling I I've been looking for you but I couldn't find you where did you go why did you escape Rhoda was like I couldn't continue to stay there because the bills were accumulating it is good I came to stay with this friend because if I stayed there the, the bill could have been so much so this guy was like okay Rhoda tell me where you are I am coming to pick you the guy went to where Rhoda was staying with a friend and then when the friend had that, I was like, oh my God, this guy must be rich. Right now, what you're going to do, you are going to only take money from him. But the guy wanted to go with Rhoda and the friend told Rhoda, tell him that you've got lots of debts. You need to pay like 1 million Tanzanian shillings. He should pay that then you'll go with him. So Rhoda went in the car and told the guy, I've got lots of debts, 1 million Tanzanian shillings. I can't go if I don't pay that. And surprisingly, the guy took 1 million shillings in cash and gave it to Rhoda. <laughs> So Rhoda returned to the friend. The friend was like, no, this guy has got bad intentions with you. Do not go with him. Why give you all this money? Why is he insisting to go with you? Return the money to him and come back here. Do not go with him. So Rhoda was like, mm, my friend might be right. This guy maybe is going to treat me bad. I'm not going to go with him. So Rhoda returned the money, threw the money to the guy and went to the house. They closed the gate and everything. The guy stayed there in the end he went away. So friends, Rhoda's first love relationship ended just like that. But what Rhoda didn't know is that the lady that she was living with, the lady that she called a friend was just a city girl. <laughs> In Swahili, they call them Shangingi, was a lady who used to sell young ladies for prostitution and take money from those young ladies. So Rhoda later on found out and was so angry, was so frustrated, but luckily that lady had an aunt who was a very good aunt took Rhoda and started living with Rhoda because Rhoda couldn't support the lifestyle that city girl lived. So after going to that aunt, the aunt told her, Rhoda, right now you need to start looking for a job and start working. Without that, how are you going to survive the city life? So guys, Rhoda started looking for a job and luckily as she was looking for a job, came across the guy that she knew from Mwanza. The guy told her that now I am living in Dar es Salaam. Rhoda told him I'm looking for a job. The guy was like, I am going to help you. Because the guy later on helped Rhoda and she found a job. There was a lounge. I don't know if it is still there. If you live in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, please comment below if Savannah Lounge still exists because I used to go there for clubbing. <laughs> yeah, so she got a job at Savannah Lounge in Posta, Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, started working there. Rhoda kept on working at Savannah Lounge and later on someone connected her at the immigration restaurant. Oh my God, for her, it was a very, very big deal. So she moved from Savannah Lounge, went to immigration to work at the restaurant. Started working there and remember guys, she had a very good experience. So guys, Rhoda tells us worked for one year at that restaurant and then one day, wasn't at work, received a call from the guy who claimed to be her client and told her that would like to see Rhoda because there is something very important they need to talk about. So Rhoda accepted to meet the guy, they fixed for an appointment and when Rhoda went for that meeting, found that guy with an Arabic lady that she knew was her client 
for a very long period of time and that arabic lady used to go with that black guy so they started talking the lady was speaking arabic and english didn't know how to speak Swahili, but the guy spoke Swahili and Rhoda spoke only Swahili. I've told you guys, only ended at primary seven. So the guy could translate English to Swahili <laughs> for Rhoda. And what this lady was telling Rhoda is that it's got a very good job for her in Dubai. When Rhoda heard about Dubai, it was like, what? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Me Rhoda, I am going to Dubai. <laughs> oh my God, God is good. She was so happy, but didn't ask what was that job all about. For her, all that matters, she was going to be working in Dubai. <laughs> Swahili girls, we call it Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Rhoda accepted guys he told her don't worry we're going to help you get your passport everything the visa and go to Dubai yes they did that Rhoda left everything left her job at that immigration office at the restaurant and went to Dubai when she arrived in Dubai that Arabic lady was at the airport waiting for Rhoda took her to her house and that is when Rhoda came to know about the job <laughs> she had gone to do in Dubai. She was going to work as the housemaid for that Arabic lady. It was Rhoda's first time being a housemaid and tells us the house was very small, but they could receive guests. Oh my God. <laughs> every single day she tells us she could work 24 7 and when she could finish working all her back could be on fire all her arms the whole body could be paining due to lots of work she could do it continued like that and she started getting sick they took her to the hospital could take lots of medicines but at the same time work 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 <laughs> told the lady no i can't do this anymore i just want to return back home so eventually Rhoda was returned back home so after Rhoda going back to Tanzania tells us stayed like two months and life started becoming very difficult for her she couldn't find a job and everyone was telling her why did you return back here life has changed everything is really really hard you will never be able to find a job and tells us while in dubai when the bosses could meet these ladies that used to work for those bosses housemaids could exchange phone numbers so after exchanging phone numbers they had like a group of housemaids so when she returned back home to tanzania and life was so hard started talking to her friends you know in that group and the friends were like there is a chance to go and work in oman why can't you go and work there if life is so hard in tanzania so rhoda accepted and that is when she did all the process and was able to go to oman started working again as a maid tells us worked as a maid in oman for two good years she was so happy <laughs> in swahili she said <laughs> meaning all was good was enjoying her work and her contract was two good years after her two years contract ending she returned back to tanzania but before she was saving every single coin she was getting from her job so her plan was to open a very big bar restaurant in Dar es Salaam. So after arriving in Dar es Salaam and then started her plans to open that bar restaurant, everything was super, super good. And yes, she was almost opening her bar restaurant. So one day tells us had finished work at that bar restaurant, went to buy some takeaway food. And as she was buying some takeaway food, came this guy, started talking to her. It was late at night, around 11.30 p.m. She responded to the guy and then the guy was like, you know, leaving. But when she was going back, working to her house, saw the guy again, this guy following her, be careful, working alone at night, you're a lady, it is very risky. <laughs> then she responded and something about Tanzanian guys, if you answer one question, <laughs> you are finished. 
he will try all his best to get you. <laughs> yeah, so it is better either not to answer. <laughs> if you know you're not interested at all, better don't respond. But from there, this guy started chasing her, started stalking her everywhere until Rhoda gave this guy a chance and eventually they started dating. When they started dating, Rhoda told the guy everything about her business, even took this guy to see her business. The guy was like, oh my God, you're so intelligent. You're a very smart lady, a woman to marry. Imagine having this big business. <laughs> <laughs> and the location was so, so good, she tells us. So the boyfriend started giving her ideas on how to improve her business, put this, put that, you know. <laughs> yeah, and the relationship was getting really, really stronger. This guy took Rhoda to introduce her to his parents. Because they knew the whole story that Rhoda had this business. So they were like, oh my God, you are a very nice girl, a very intelligent young lady. So guys, all was good. So opened that business, it was doing great, but she was still doing the paperwork for registering her business. If you are African or Tanzanian, you will know how things sometimes can be so slow. So she had not finished yet to register her business. So as she was waiting from Tanzania Revenue Authority people, you know, the TRA people to call her about her registry to go and sign. Unfortunately, Rhoda lost her dad in Mwanza and had to leave all her business in the hands of this new boyfriend, go to the funeral. The boyfriend was like, it's okay, don't worry, I'll manage everything. You will find everything booming as it's going now. So Rhoda left, went to Mwanza, they did the funeral, and because she is someone who had money in their family, so she spent really lots of money for the funeral process. Tells us at that time, didn't have money anymore left with her apart from her business and then started falling sick while in Mwanza. Decided to go to the hospital. When they checked her, she was pregnant <laughs> for that guy. So called the guy and was like, you know what? I'm pregnant. I was like, hooray, I am so happy. I'm going to be a father. <laughs> when she asked about the business, the guy the business is doing great. I can't wait for you to come here so that we can celebrate, you know, for her pregnancy. So after some time, Rhoda returned to Dar es Salaam and when she arrived, this guy started giving her stories that were not adding up at all. The guy told her, you know, the TRA people called for the signature. So what I did, cause you are not here, I had to change the names of the owner of this business and put my names cause you were not there and someone had to sign the papers. I was like, what, what are you saying? Are you serious? Why didn't you tell me this? Why didn't you wait for me? The guy was like, you are my girlfriend. Where is the problem? The business is ours. So Rhoda was so angry at this, but wouldn't change anything at all. So they kept on doing business together, but it's the guy now that was managing the business as if it is his own. Rhoda tells us couldn't see any money, then started getting sick due to her pregnancy, had to go and stay at home, couldn't work, and the guy kept on not giving her money of the business, telling her that the business is not doing well, but could return in the morning when she could ask, could be like lots of clients, but money nowhere to be seen. So it continued like that till Rhoda gave birth to her beautiful baby girl. After giving birth, she was like, let me go back to the business. She went back to the business, but what happened? The guy started treating her so bad, could even insult her in front of other workers. Things got really, really worse and Rhoda had to leave that business, stay at home, started cooking food and then distributing it to different offices. That was her small business. The other bar restaurant left it to the boyfriend because the boyfriend was like, this is my business. You are not supposed to tell me anything. So she lost her business just like that. 
So with these guys, Rhoda tells you never ever trust any man in your life. Your money is your money. Be very, very careful guys. She hustled, suffered so much to get that money. Imagine losing it like that to a guy, a guy who doesn't even love you. So Go. guys to her love life tells us they could fight and fight and fight and what she didn't know about the guy he was a mama's boy and most of the times when they could fight the parents could come and start wanting to solve the misunderstandings between them and the father could be more on Rhoda's side because the dad understood how the son was but the mother didn't like that and eventually this guy started accusing Rhoda of sleeping with the dad and that's when the mother-in-law hated her so much. Even one time, Rhoda tells us the guy attacked her, started strangling her, and the mother was just looking. So this guy could beat up Rhoda so, so much. So she tells us when they could be, you know, getting intimate, this guy could want his eggplant and his arms to enter down there. Can you imagine? So she was like, this guy was sleeping with me trying to destroy my body because the guy who loves you will never do such a thing to you. We respect your body. So Rhoda suffered a lot in that relationship. And more to that, the guy took her passport and all her important documents so that Rhoda doesn't go anywhere. She couldn't do any more. Her cooking business, nothing could just lock the door and leave her inside the house, just like a prisoner. So they continued keeping her as a prisoner. And then one day Rhoda was like, let me calm down and put myself down, you know, talk to these people, you know, try to ask for forgiveness if I have ever done anything bad to them. So talk to the mother-in-law and was like, mom, I am very sorry. Please forgive me. If there is anything I ever wronged you, please forgive me. And the guy was there too. She asked for forgiveness even to the guy, though she had not wronged anyone, but she wanted her freedom, wanted peace. So after talking to them like that, it was like they have forgiven her and even the guy started letting Rhoda a bit free. But from that time, Rhoda never gave her body to that guy because when he was beating her in the past, he used to talk so bad about her body. Even one time when he was beating her, spitted on her and talked very badly of her body. I didn't have that courage anymore to undress even in front of him. Oh my God, some men can really destroy you. Rhoda had this friend in Oman. They never met, but they were just chatting online. Remember the group that I told you. So this friend knew everything that Rhoda was going through. And then when she told the friend that she is a bit free, that friend in Oman was like, you need to leave that place. Rhoda told the friend, I don't have enough money. The friend told her, don't worry, I am going to top up for you. That is when they started planning everything. And Rhoda told the mother-in-law and the family that she wanted to go to Mwanza like the next day. So they let her free and before she went to the saloon, hugged the daughter, kissed her daughter and left. After leaving, went to the saloon, did everything. She had planned it all. Even her clothes were well Hugged. So after the saloon, that same same day, went to the airport and that is when the mother-in-law started looking for her. The boyfriend started looking for her. <laughs> In the end, told them that I have left. You have left how? I have left. I am not coming back. I am going to Oman. The mother-in-law was so shocked, didn't even expect that. And the guy continued calling her. He didn't believe. But in the end, when he knew that it was serious, Rhoda had left, sent a very bad, bad message to her, telling her you are so stupid. I never knew that you're such a stupid lady. You know, yeah, but Rhoda didn't care. She was okay that she had left that miserable life. But deep inside was sad, because she had to leave her daughter. And about her daughter, tells us in the past had tried to escape with the daughter, but they came 
took the daughter away from her. They were like, you can go. But the father-in-law was like, you cannot go, just stay here with us. And that is how she was able to remain in that family. But still the baby daddy and the mother-in-law kept on treating her badly. So no matter how she was going to try to take away her daughter, it was not going to happen. So she knew her daughter was going to be okay. So left and went to Oman, started working, but told herself, I will never, never date again a black guy tells us no matter how handsome a black guy can be he will never date any tanzanian guy any black guy it's not that all black guys are bad or all tanzanian guys are bad it's due to her past love relationship experience she was like things are here this is the end between me and black men. Right now, I want a white guy. That is when a friend introduced her to online dating apps. But guys, remember, Rhoda doesn't have any experience of how online dating apps can be, doesn't have any experience of how these online dating guys can behave. For her, she thought, all white men are good, all white men are honest, all white men they will love you so deeply, you know, <laughs> passionately, without making you cry. That is what was in Rhoda's mind when she joined online dating apps to search for the one. So friends, Rhoda joined online dating apps July 2022, last year. She was very, very excited. You know, it is the whole new experience. And that is when you start dreaming of getting married to a white guy. <laughs> Because you start searching, you know, with high hopes. <laughs> Giving up comes later, but those first, first, you know, weeks, you'll be high in the clouds, you know, <laughs> dreaming <laughs> of your interracial family, how it's gonna be, having mixed kids and all that. So she started chatting with guys from all around the world and then one day received a message from this particular guy. This guy is Spanish. His name is Carlos, but works in Kuwait. So Carlos sent a very beautiful message to Rhoda and really it caught her attention. She was like, no, I have to respond to him and get to know this guy. So they started chatting and everything was flowing. The guy was praising her. The guy was telling her, you're so beautiful. I can't wait to get to know you more. I can't wait to meet you in person. So Rhoda tells us after chatting for a while on that dating app, Carlos suggested that they move out of that dating app and Rhoda should download a certain app so that they can communicate there. Rhoda accepted, downloaded that certain app and then started chatting on that app. So as they kept on building their relationship because Carlos told her that he was in Kuwait for work, this guy could travel. And whenever he could travel, his communication could be a bit inconsistent. So Rhoda was asking herself why, but at the same time telling herself, maybe when he is busy working, doesn't have time to communicate to me. So she tolerated that they kept on with their relationship. And then one time this guy told her that he had traveled to Spain. When he went to Spain, he disappeared completely on the phone. <laughs> and later on returned, was like, you know, I was in Spain, but I was so busy with family, so I couldn't communicate to you. Again, Rhoda was like, it's okay. <laughs> as long as you returned and we are talking, it's okay. So they kept on like that, a guy coming and disappearing, especially when he travels for work, when he goes to Spain. And whenever he could travel, he couldn't even make like a video call. You see, 
um, at the airport no he could just take a photo of himself and the photo of food be like i am at the airport now traveling for work but she didn't get more deeper into that ignored everything and continued their relationship so they kept on communicating and it reached a point this guy was really so close you know into Rhoda wanting to know her more and more even started learning Swahili it is Rhoda who was teaching the guy so the guy started learning Nakupenda Mpenzi Wangu <laughs> So could write even messages, you know, those sweet Swahili messages. Nakupenda mpenzi wangu, nakumisi mpenzi wangu. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Love can make you look so silly. Yeah. And as I continue, you will understand why I'm saying that love can make you look so silly. So they kept on like that, communicating, the guy praising her. He could send even 20 messages in a day to her. <laughs> But remember when he travels, he could be online, send her messages and before she responds, the guy is offline. <laughs> then again, return. And when it comes to calls, it was this guy who could call Rhoda only. Not a single day that Rhoda called the guy and the guy picked never <laughs> the calls were only allowed to come from the guy's side so guys in the communication and i came to know this after asking rhoda questions because <laughs> when rhoda came to me she didn't come to share this story not at all she came to me to ask for an advice about carlos <laughs> so you know when you come for an advice i have to ask you questions to get to understand you know the whole story so after listening to all this story with carlos i advised her and she was super happy that she came to me that is when was like bella i think you need to share my story so that other ladies can learn from it so that is when i accepted to share her story and here i am guys so rhoda continued her relationship with carlos and for her thought everything was just okay and one time carlos was like you know for us spanish men we don't marry that first we first live with you for so long <laughs> and then when we are sure that you are the one that is when we get married to you so what i'm going to do i'm going to take an apartment in dubai we live together for some time when i am sure that you are really a woman i want to marry then i'm going to get married to you rhoda was so happy you know started imagining of how she's gonna be living with carlos in the apartment in dubai <laughs> so yes. the relationship continued and then carlos was like i really want to meet you let us start planning for our meeting so they planned for their first meeting and rhoda told carlos when you come let us meet in the city where i stay carlos said okay so start looking for hotels, hotels. so she started looking for hotels around that city and when she sent you know the names of the hotels of the city where rhoda lives the guy was like no i'm not that kind of a type for me i like five stars hotel or four stars hotel not those kind of hotels that you are showing me so with this i think i can't find any good hotel in your place let us meet in dubai so they talked rhoda told carlos the day when she is free which was 18 october 2022 so they agreed and carlos told her i am going to be the one to look for the hotel so they also talked about the transport from where rhoda lives to dubai you people who live there you will understand she told me something like fujia <laughs> yeah so fujia to dubai the guy was like i'm going to book a flight ticket for you so that you can come Rhoda was like no it is a very short distance i'll just take a taxi and carlos was like if you're going to take a taxi i will be the one 
to pay for that taxi. I have to be responsible and take care of everything. Don't worry, everything will be on me. Just ask how much and let me know. So friends, Rhoda tells us they planned for that first meeting with Carlos for the whole one month. And as they were talking, one day Carlos was like, I am going to come with protection that day. I know we are not planning to have the goodies, but just for emergency, if it happens, you know? <laughs> So Rhoda was like, no, there is no need because you're not going to do it. But Carlos insisted. Rhoda was like, okay, thank you because that shows you care and you really want to protect me. So they kept on talking and planning, but every single day, Carlos could be like, Natamani ni kuone mpenzi wangu. In English, I can't wait to meet you. Good night, my love. But remember, 18th of October, don't disappear on me because I am about to book for the hotel <laughs> and for my flight ticket from Kuwait to Dubai. So tells us every day they could talk, the guy could be talking about that day, how he's going to be happy when he sees her and all that. So it was all day long talking about their meeting, their meeting, their meeting, their meeting. And there guys, we have a red flag. Before I end this video, I'm going to tell you all the red flags that Rhoda ignored. If you're chatting with a guy online, then you have to watch out. So friends, one day before they met, which was 17th October, 2022, <laughs> Afro cinema starts here, guys. You're going to laugh a lot and get angry at the same time about their first meeting. So on 17th, Carlos called Rhoda and was like, I'm ready to travel, go to Dubai today for our meeting tomorrow. The guy was like, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Please come, because if you don't come, I'm going to cry a lot. <laughs> Then Rhoda was like, don't worry, my love, I am going to come. And whenever she could say that, the guy could be more excited and could start praising her. I love you so much, baby. You are so beautiful, baby. <laughs> yeah. So he traveled to Dubai. And when he arrived in Dubai, was like, I have arrived at the hotel. The hotel is so nice. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. So Rhoda was like, cause you are at the hotel. Baby, can you please do a video call so that I can see you and you show me around the room? Carlos was like, no, I am very tired right now, baby. I want to sleep, you know, wake up early tomorrow. <laughs> So Rhoda was like, okay, maybe because of work and all that, traveling, and was like, okay, good night, baby. We will see each other tomorrow. <laughs> the big day. <laughs> so to the big day, Rhoda tells us that day she woke up at nine, started preparing herself. But for Carlos, woke up at 10 and they started sending messages to her but because Rhoda was preparing herself didn't see those messages at all she was so busy didn't even eat and then took the taxi so in the taxi the guy kept on sending her messages but she couldn't see the messages because she had left the house because she is using wi-fi while inside the house so in the taxi it was hard for carlos to get to her unless he made a normal call and that's what carlos did called her with a dubai number on a normal call and told her i was so scared started getting you know stressed <laughs> after not hearing from you where are you now rhoda told him i am in the taxi coming. Carlos told her, don't worry, you pay for that taxi and when you arrive here, I'm going to refund back the money to you. So Rhoda continued with her trip and again, Carlos called her and was like, are you hungry, baby? Then Rhoda said, yes, baby, I am very, very hungry. I haven't eaten anything. Carlos was like, don't worry, baby. When you arrive here, I'm going to order some food for you. So she said, okay, baby, later. Then continued and arrived at the hotel 
where Carlos had told her. After arriving at the hotel, Carlos was outside waiting for her and when they saw each other, oh my god, they were so happy to meet each other in person, hugged so tightly and then went to the hotel room. <laughs> so guys, when they arrived in the hotel room, Rhoda found a cake with two forks and a bottle of wine with two plastic glasses. So when she looked at them, Carlos immediately told her, Rhoda, you told me you were so hungry. Here is the cake. Eat some cake while we wait to order some food. So she started eating the because she was really, really hungry. <laughs> Ate the cake so, so fast. And then Carlos started pouring wine, you know, into those glasses and told her, my love, cheers. So they started drinking wine, but Rhoda was taking it slow. But for Carlos, he could power some wine into the glass and then be like, <laughs> put the glass down when it's empty. So wanted Rhoda to do the same thing, but Rhoda did not do that, told him, I am not all that much of a drinker, that is why I'm taking my time. Carlos was like, but I took this wine, it's a sweet wine, I thought you would like it. <laughs> you told me you like sweet things. She was like, yes, I like sweet things, but not so, so sweet. I've eaten the cake, then the wine, just let me go slow. So Carlos started telling her, you are so beautiful, but hey, the way you are dressed, because she was wearing hijabu, you know, if you're working there, you are going to understand me. You know, you're supposed to dress up very, very decently. <laughs> wearing long dresses, so she was wearing hijab and told him you know here I cannot just wear any howly no I have to cover myself well that is why I'm dressed up like this but inside I'm not dressed up like this so eventually she removed the hijabu and stayed with her normal outfits so they continued talking and the guy was really really talkative bringing stories this story that story even told her that has got friends that are married to black african women telling her about interracial couples that he knows and he can't wait you know <laughs> be in an interracial marriage with her then he had come along with a small radio she told me it was like but he was playing music so they were listening to music while talking, everything was going well. Then Carlos started touching Rhoda, you know? <laughs> the guy wanted the goodies and Rhoda understood that the guy wanted her to get drunk so that he can take the goodies easily. <laughs> Oh, he can be accepted to take the goodies easily because she is drunk. <laughs> but that did not happen. Rhoda wasn't drunk at all but pretended you know to go with the flow so the guy was touching her and eventually she said you know what stop we did not agree to do this when we meet we had agreed on i come here we meet we talk and then after i go back home <laughs> safe and sound Oh my goodness, when Carlos heard that, Rhoda tells us the guy changed. You know, from being talkative, he became so quiet, he became so sad, started putting a very sad face like this, you know, thinking, then took that radio that they were playing music. <laughs> And started listening to the music, you know, not even looking at her. The mood went away, you know, from a hundred to zero. <laughs> After hearing no goodies, <laughs> Carlos became a different person. He became mute. <laughs> So guys, in Swahili, you know, I had to translate this story from Swahili to English because Rhoda doesn't speak English, <laughs> knows just, you know, little, little English words. <laughs> so in Swahili, she was like, the guy Ali Nwea, <laughs> Ali Poza, you know, <laughs> if you understand Swahili. <laughs> 
someone who was hi 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 and then hmm. <laughs> this is so funny <laughs> so when Rhoda saw that I was like oh <laughs> now I understand this guy wants the game and what I'm going to do I am going to give him the game <laughs> You know, he wants the goodies. I'm going to give him the goodies because even if I give him the goodies, doesn't mean my goodies are going to go away or disappear. <laughs> She's so crazy, guys. But let's not judge her. <laughs> yeah. So in the end, she talked to herself and was like, okay, let me give him the goodies. But promised herself, I'm going to give this guy my goodies in a way that he will never ever forget me and after this he will always think of me and when he thinks of me he's gonna get confused he will go crazy <laughs> over me you know she is a nyamwezi and you know in nyamwezi tribe ladies are taught on how to be active on bed <laughs> So she was like, this guy is going to go crazy over me. Let me show him how we do it. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> took her small bag, tells us in her small bag, she had expected such kind of a thing. So she prepared herself, <laughs> had come with a very sexy, See, nightwear with a bikini. So went to the washroom, took a shower, and after taking a shower, what she did, she dressed up in that sexy nightwear with a bikini, then went to this guy. He didn't know anything at all of what was happening. <laughs> so after seeing Rhoda, the guy was like, wow, you're so beautiful. I like your skin. You've got a soft skin. You're the kind of lady I was looking for. Oh my God, I've got everything I ever wanted in a woman. The guy started talking again. He became so talkative. <laughs> This is really funny. <laughs> he became talkative, praising her. And yes, they started taking the goodies. <laughs> oh my God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, they started enjoying the goodies. And Carlos had told Rhoda <laughs> that he is 42 years old. But <laughs> Sorry guys, the way he looked didn't look 42. The guy looked 50. <laughs> so as they were enjoying the goodies, Rhoda tells us she's someone that is well skilled when it comes to being active on bed. So Rhoda kept on trying different styles, <laughs> different tricks from everything that they taught her, <laughs> practiced them on Carlos. But Carlos wasn't reaching the end. <laughs> I hope you guys understand me. You know, I don't want to be in trouble with YouTube due to this. Yeah, so that is why I'm talking like this. <laughs> yeah, so the guy, it reached one hour, nothing. And Rhoda was super tired. <laughs> so she said, okay, now I have to try the other way. This way, it's not working at all. <laughs> Oh my god. So tells us she took the nothing, nothing, tried, 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 tells us did everything and in the end discovered a point <laughs> which was supposed to be touched long time <laughs> but she didn't know and that's when Carlos reached but tells us she was so tired it was a struggle and that is when she was like no this guy can't be 42 <laughs> so guys Rhoda tells us Carlos was super happy started telling her baby do you want to marry me baby after this I love you so much oh my god you drive me crazy <laughs> I'll never forget this moment, you know, time together. Before Carlos frowned <laughs> when he heard he was not going to get the goodies, had given Rhoda a box 
which was a gift for her but she did not open that so everything was good and after the goodies they kept on talking and talking and tells us around six that is when Rhoda left the hotel and started her journey to return to Fujia. So guys, Rhoda returned back home and after arriving, received lots of messages from Carlos asking her, did you arrive safe my love? Thank you so much for today. I love you so much. I am here preparing to go to the airport to return to Kuwait. So she responded and after that, that is when she decided to go open her gift. <laughs> when she opened the gift, was shocked found very cheap cheap things inside that box found a watch that watch was a very cheap cheap watch actually it was a designer watch but tells us she knows the original <laughs> <laughs> that designer watch that one that carlos gave to her was just a fake one and she was so so angry at carlos not only that guys carlos never gave rhoda the money for transport and tells us she spent a hundred and fifty dollars from where she lives to dubai go meet carlos but when she was leaving never received even a single coin from carlos and another thing that i know you're asking yourself did carlos order food for her he never ordered food for her she only ate that cake and the wine and that's it <laughs> oh my god what a cheap guy <laughs> But guys, Rhoda never saw any red flag in all this that I'm talking about. But I know you who is watching this video have been on online dating apps searching. You can tell the red flags. So after that, guys, Carlos kept on communicating with her for at least two good days. And whenever he could communicate to her, could tell her that he can still remember how he enjoyed that day when they were enjoying the goodies. That is the only thing Carlos was telling her. So they kept on like communicating. He could send her messages. Good morning, my love. Good night, my love. Just like that. Then after a week, Carlos was like, I enjoyed so much. So we need to fix another date to meet so that we can enjoy the goodies. So Rhoda told Carlos, I've told you that I don't have off days again. I have to wait for at least two months and then get an off day so we can't meet because he wanted them to meet again in november she said no i cannot you have to wait don't love me how can't you make time for me if i want to see you i have to see you i am your boyfriend <laughs> so she was like i told you about the conditions of my work the guy was like no talk to your bosses and if they don't agree you can just leave that work go back to tanzania i'll be coming to tanzania to see you <laughs> Not to marry you, no. So Rhoda was like, if you love me that much, please let me come to Kuwait and live with you. He never responded. <laughs> okay, if you love me that much, I will go back to Tanzania. The guy never responded. Started being like, I've told you I want to meet you next month. <laughs> Rhoda told him, no, I think we can meet 24th february if that's okay with you so he was like okay we can meet 24th february but what happened the guy stopped completely communicating like the way he used to communicate with her could send her only two messages good morning and good night whenever rhoda could want to make like a conversation the guy could respond only one message out of 20 messages that rhoda could send and be like let's meet 24th february <laughs> oh my god but rhoda kept on like talking to him you know wanting their relationship to keep growing but the guy wasn't cooperating at all he had lost interest but wanted to meet her 24th february so you who is watching this video write me in the comment section below if you were rhoda 
Were you going to continue chatting with this guy or you were going to block him? Were you going to set another meeting with this guy or you were going to block him? <laughs> but please, <laughs> don't start insulting this lady. <laughs> Please, I beg of. <laughs> yeah, take it easy on her. So guys, after Carlos keeping on acting like this, that is when Rhoda came across my videos and then checked me on Instagram. After checking me on Instagram, she told me her story and I was angry. Guys, if I could make you listen to the voice notes that I sent to Rhoda, I was so angry, but we don't have enough time for that. I was super angry at her and I started telling her, Rhoda, why? Why? Because guys, first of all, Rhoda did a very big, big mistake. Because before you meet a guy, you have to make sure every questions that you want to ask that guy, you ask him and you get clear answers. If the guy isn't giving you clear answers, there is no need to keep going forward. Second, if you're going to meet a guy, let's say you are living in the same country, you are not supposed to meet that guy in the hotel room. Never ever do such kind of a mistake. Because some guys are criminals in the dating apps. You go to the hotel and does something bad to you, who will help you? No one. You went there by yourself. Guys, be very careful. Don't trust a guy just like that. I've been singing, meet in the public place. If it is the restaurant, they were supposed to meet in the garden. I told her in Dubai, I know exist lots of beautiful gardens. They could have just gone to a garden, talk, and then after talking, she could have returned back home without sharing the goodies or putting herself into the temptations. Another big mistake that Rhoda did guys in this world exist evil people that is why we should always be careful no matter you are looking for a white man please my dear sisters be very careful eating the things that this guy brought what if in that cake it was poisoned what if in that cake he had put something to make her sleep and then abuse her who could have helped her no one so never do such kind of a mistake. Please, please, dear beautiful ladies. I repeat, transport. I've been telling you guys, if you're going to meet that guy, it's the guy that wants to meet you, okay? Yes, you too want to meet the guy, but in this case, it's the guy that really needs to show the efforts, you know, of wanting to see you. And where do we see the efforts? The guy should pay for your trip never take your money and pay for your trip to go visit a guy never ever because this guy end of this story was just a broke guy who was looking for a lady to have goodies at an affordable price when you communicate with a guy on online dating apps observe what he tells you if the guy is more into sex it is sex you turn like this sex you turn like this sex. He sends this message sex. You know that that relationship will never work. The guy only wants sex from you. Dear ladies, it is high time we learn. There is a lot to learn from this story, but as we see, it is long already. But due to the way it ended, I hope you learned some. So after talking to her and telling her you did a very wrong thing to sleep with a guy, no matter this guy cried tears and, and you saw tears falling, you are not supposed to give him the goodies. No matter what, always protect your goodies. Because once you give your goodies out, you lose power. Because this guy took the goodies and started acting weird. <laughs> also was talking to meet her the next time so that he can take the goodies. Nothing more. Was not interested to talk of the future. Was not interested to talk of the family. Nothing, guys. Do you know anyone in his family? No. I told her this guy might be married in Spain and also at the same time has got a woman in Kuwait. Who knows? So if you don't know a guy very well, please, please, please don't trust a guy. First see the actions and then 
Start attaching yourself little by little. So Rhoda told me, Bella, what can I do? Because as she was telling me this, asking for an advice, she was like, hmm, Bella, maybe he will be my future husband. I laughed a lot because I knew there was no husband there. <laughs> yeah. So I told Rhoda, if you really want to know if this guy is serious, you know, confirm. But from my experience, this guy does not love you. He's just a broke guy who only wants to use you. <laughs> but try this, ask this guy some money cause you paid for yourself. You are not a gold digger if you ask money from him. And let's see if he's gonna react. Goodies will never keep a guy, will never. Goodies will never change the mind of the guy. Don't think that you'll give your goodies and then the guy will start planning to engage you. And then the guy will start planning to get married to you. It will never happen. So keep your goodies because goodies will never help you get married learn from this story guys so i told her ask money she asked for money and what happened the guy disappeared completely as we are speaking now he came to me told me bella thank you so much i'm so happy to come across your channel you have helped me so much because this guy could have kept on torturing me because it's me who was thinking i was in a relationship but for him was with me only to use me take my goodies guys be very careful please please no matter you are looking for a white man i told you the things that you will look into a black guy to know if this black guy is really serious with you you have to see them too in a white guy there is no exceptional okay dear ladies i have to end it from here guys thank you so much for watching this video till now god bless you so much please if you've liked this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends family everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something watch my other videos too they are super good comment below what you think about this video until next time guys i love you so much you're always here in my heart ciao ciao